guys how's it going hope you guys are all holding up <laughs> um yeah so i have been i know i say that like every time i make a video um just you know collaging away and um i've been thinking about making minis and blah 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 um I'm not sure these are these are actually going to turn out to be minis but they're going to be really fun anyways and so i started working on like a prototype and okay well first of all my inspiration for these was these uh airmail envelopes i think i bought these on ebay there was a seller that i had shared with you guys a long time ago that happened to have had a bunch of um, vintage office supplies and stuff i got some paper from him and you know envelopes and other little doodads um so i wanted to i wanted to use these as covers but then i started thinking you know i just like them the way they are and i thought you know, if I was going to use them as covers, I would want to alter them somehow. And, you know, I don't know. I just think that that would take away from what they are. And, um, yeah. So anyway, and I thought about doing like an, um, like a, a magnetic closure right here because that's steel. So, you know, a magnet will stick to that. Um, if you ever get envelopes like this, you know, with the little, I mean, I'm sure you guys do, but, um, you know, a magnet will stick to that. So it's kind of cool anyway. So then I'll, all I would have to do would be to like alter this. I don't like to leave the sticky part on envelopes. You know, I like to cover that usually. So, so I'll do something like that and, um, and cover that up and put a magnet in there. But anyway, do I, so I do want to use these. I've got 18 of them. Actually I have 19. And for some reason, I have a hard time doing odd numbers. So I think I'm going to wind up doing 18 of these little journals. So since I don't want to use these as covers, but I do want to use them um, because I wanted to do something with all of this French stuff that I have, you know, uh, no sense buying it and not using it. Right. And um, <clears throat> I happen to have, you know, a good supply of it now. So I thought, OK just you know just do some collage just pull out all the french ephemera the ledgers the you know all the stuff and do some collage and that will inspire you so that's what i did um i have a bunch of these uh these are my favorite file folder pieces these come from like uh, medical files so there's usually three of these in each one of those so it'll have like a heavy duty cover and then it'll have three pages, okay, with a tab and in, in the three different, um, you know, spots. So I love using these because they're just, they're super nice, they're durable, and you can write on the back of them. And I just think that's nice to use for tags. And you can fold them pretty well, and they hold their shape. So what I did was I just pulled out a whole bunch of those, and I started collaging them. And you can see that this is what I wound, I wound up cutting them down to this uh, width so that these would still fit inside them, right? Um, they're about a half an inch taller than the envelopes. But I just, you know, since I did all of this collage on these, I didn't want to cut off any more of it, you know? So what I decided to do was make like a flap okay normally i would do a pocket um but i kind of wanted these to be almost like a um like a folio type of thing or you know and i love stitching in signatures so i thought i would do these with like two signatures and um give them a little bit of a spine so yeah so i just kind of started playing around and i cut down a whole bunch of them that i collaged and just FYI, um, I do plan to, since every time I show this kind of stuff, 
I inevitably I get comments saying you should scan those and sell them in your shop and and stuff the the collages you know so I did actually scan a bunch of these and I am going I'm in the process of having them uh, done up so I can list them in my shop okay I had to pull the ones that didn't have anything that I felt was copyrighted or anything so you know like I think this one and this one this one you know um and if there is like a page from something that is copyrighted um you know I don't know I don't know what to do about that but there we have it anyway and then I also wound up with a whole bunch of as I'm collaging I do these um I make piles of my scraps you know and I had so much just solid paper left over like this giant stack of it um, or you know pieces that just didn't have very much writing at all so I just I just went through that pile and started collaging it onto some of these pages these are from uh, like a scrapbook and <clears throat> this paper is kind of brittle so I can't really fold it but but it works really great for tags and stuff anyway so yeah so I went kind of crazy and so I did actually scan a bunch of these also. So these are great for like collage bases, you know, or even to just cut apart and make into tags. So yeah, so I'll have a listing for these and then uh, also one for these. And then I had some other um, collages that I did with a bunch of that French ephemera, um, you like a couple months ago so I scanned a bunch of those and I've been actually using those in some of my journals so I should have like three listings coming up with collage you know scan things anyway oh my god so I think I did 18 of these I don't remember but it, it doesn't really matter if I need to do more I will so here's what I did I took, this is kind of, this is my prototype. So whatever I, you know, decide to do, you know, as I'm playing around with it, I'm going to do it on this one. So I took this out to the garage and I sprayed it with um, a semi-gloss clear spray. And I like to do that because it kind of pops out the color of some of these papers a little bit. I have not sprayed this one yet. So you can see it, it does kind of enhance the tone a little bit and and I think it actually makes it a little bit more durable right I mean that's what the intention is so yeah so I sprayed it and then um just tried to figure you know I had to figure out where I wanted my my you know scores and stuff like that um yeah so I'm kind of liking it I'm enjoying it so I I thought you know what I'll just try to do a little bit of a series maybe and see what you guys think um so here's here's my here's my thought process <laughs> um so i needed to figure out the width of the envelope right so it was about five inches is what it wound up being it's this is actually about four and three quarter inches but i wanted to have a little bit of a border all the way around so I wound up with a score at five inches. I'm not going to, I'm going to spray this after I do the scoring and stuff. Okay. So I'll just kind of walk you through what I wound up doing. I think it was five inches. So if you want to try to do something like this, you know, basically what I would say is pull out all your envelopes and, you know, <laughs> um, just look at look at envelopes that would fit into whatever size um, folio you want to make you know so I'm using this guy because it's pretty sharp and it it actually works pretty well most of my uh, bone folders I don't they're not that sharp so um, and then sometimes I use this end this little burnisher it actually has a little roller ball in there. It's kind of cool. Um, so five inches. And then also um, I wanted like a quarter inch spine. So I just went quarter of an inch. Did another one. It doesn't have to be super strong. 
of a score. Okay, so those, and that was on the front cover. So that's the front and then scored five and five and other one. This is the flap, okay, like the closure. So this was at two and a half and three inches. Um, I guess I should tell you the, um, I should tell you the size of this, but I think, you know, if you wind, if you just, you know, determine that you want to try to do something like this, you just have to do your own measurements, you know, um, whoops. There we go. And I could totally do this like with a ruler or something too and just mark out the score lines and do it with a ruler and a and a um a bone folder or something but this seems to work. Anyway, so then I'm just going to bend these up. Uh you do wind up with a little bit of breakage on, you know, some of these papers and so you know, I just kind of just kind of go with it and you know it's it, it is gonna some of these papers are kind of brittle and um so I just I don't care like <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't matter so I'm just gonna actually kind of enhance that a little bit by just distressing those scores a little bit more you know it's it's a natural um it's a natural place to do some distressing Okay, and then that kind of, uh, this is just some kind of medium grit sandpaper that I wrapped around uh, uh, one of those big tongue depressors or popsicle, it's not a popsicle stick, it's bigger than that, but um, yeah, so I'm just kind of lightly sanding where the paper kind of um, frayed a little bit, you know, when it, when it, when it creased, see what I mean? Like you do get a little bit of like breakage. So just kind of real gently um, sanding that off because I don't necessarily want to weaken the this uh, this board at all. So I don't want to sand too hard or else I'm going to wind up damaging that. Okay. Um, and then like around the edges, sometimes I, I'll just use the sandpaper to kind of clean up the edges and, and whatnot. Um, and then I did a half inch corner round. Whoa. I did a half inch corner on this just because I think I thought it looked nice. Um, and then I will come back and, um, and sand that a little bit too. Cause I don't know. I think my half inch side on this is, I don't know. It just seems like it doesn't really work that well. So I always come back and sort of clean it up. Oh my God, this is so hard for me to explain. I don't know. I don't know why. So I will tell you what the measurement is on this one, even though I'm not really sure what the length is altogether. I just sort of eyeballed it and then it just worked out to be these, these measurements, right? So that's 12. So this is actually like 13 and a half inches long. If you use a, um, a legal size, I guess that would be a legal size. Um, file folder that should, you know, they should be that length, I would think. Um, anyway, so that's, so that's my cover. Okay. And then, so I'm going to do all of these covers. I'll do them all up to this point and then I will take them all out to the garage and spray them all. I might wind up doing like, you know, collage -y type of stuff on these. I just really like 
just that, you know, just that simple um, ephemera on there, you know, because it's just beautiful. That's what I got it for. You know, that's why I wanted it it's, be, for the writing and, and the script and, you know, all that stuff. So, so I want that to really speak for itself. So I'm leaving, I'm not uh, putting any flowers on them or anything like that. Um, so, it, you know, actually these wouldn't be a bad, these would actually be kind of cool for, for a guy. Now that I think about it, I'm not making them like girly, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, and I'm not sure at this point what I'm going to do for closure. Um, and you know what? It could even close like that. Like this could fold in and then that over. So I, I think I want to try to leave that as an option whenever I think about what kind of closure I'm going to put on these. So I might wind up just doing like elastic that would wrap around either way. You know, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I really wanted to do a magnet, but a magnet doesn't really hold well if this gets really full. So, um, so I don't think I'll do a magnet as a closure, but yeah, so that's kind of where I got to on these. Now, as far as the envelopes, um, <laughs> let me just show you what I pulled out of my drawers because I went a little crazy and what I decided to do was to kind of make these like a, um, like a hybrid journal. Um, I had done some, some journals like that last year. And since I have so many envelopes and so many paper bags, I just was like, okay. And I actually got rid of a whole bunch. I don't know if you watched my like studio tour video, you saw I have a huge filing cabinet drawer full of just bags and then another one full of envelopes and then a whole other like thing full of envelopes. So Anyway, so I pulled out a bunch of envelopes. Um, I have some other airmail envelopes. And I just thought these would these would be nice to use too. Um, so I pulled out, you know, some of those. And these are just uh, just paper, craft paper bags. These are a five by seven. And then some larger craft paper bags. I think these are six. No, what size are these? The six by nine. Yeah, these are the six by nine. And then some craft envelopes. So these are the nice heavy ones that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to alter these. And, and then some of the smaller ones. Oh, so these are, and these are invitation envelopes. So they're straight across. And I love those because I just think that they're more versatile to use as pockets and stuff. So anyways, these are, I don't remember what A they are, but they're like, I don't, I don't know, A, A5 or something. I don't know. So they're um, five and three quarters by eight and three quarters. Okay. Um, and then the smaller ones, these are the these are really cool. I love using these in the center of a signature because they're just, I love craft paper so much. Um, so these ones are also five and three quarter by four and three eighths. Okay. Um, so I'm going to alter these also. And then, oh, and I am going to do a little bit of alteration on these. Uh, believe it or not, I am trying to keep these relatively simple. And then some library pockets. There's two sizes of library pockets. And then some of these little coin envelopes, little craft coin envelopes that I'm going to use. Um, and then I had some other envelopes. These are just like, like a floral um, pattern. There's some flowers on them. So that will make them a little bit girly, I guess. But anyway... So those and the air melt envelopes. <laughs> okay. So what I decided to do was make one signature be like a kind of like a supply pack. Okay. So this will be like 
where you would store all your little notepads and your your tags and little bits that you may want to write on or little cards and things like that and like supplies that you would use in the re in the other part of the journal um so this this would be like for your consumables i guess but you could also alter these as you're journaling and stuff so I don't want to embellish these too much because I, I still want the end user to be able to, you know, make this their own and and to make this something that they've created. But, you know, I will do a little bit of alteration on certain things just to kind of give them a base to start with, you know, kind of like those collage papers. Like those are really just a base to, to build on. Um Anyway, so so I thought, okay, one signature can just be like envelopes and stuff. This one's not attached. This is where it may go. Um, so that would be like the first signature. Or I might make that the back signature. I'm not sure. And then um, I am going to do this envelope. I'll glue this one onto the front. Okay. But I want to do a bunch of stitching and stuff. And I'm trying to figure out exactly where everything's going to go and how I'm going to put it all together um, before I start gluing too much on here. Like these, I shouldn't have glued this on here yet because I would actually do some stitching around this before I glued it on. Um, so this is going to get covered and then we're going to have a magnet there. I covered, this is the six by nine bag. So I just covered it with paper on the back. And then I cut it open here. I haven't done a notch in it yet. Um, so it's just, you know, one side is covered with other paper. And then this is a little coin envelope. I cut the flap off and then just did a little notch. This I would also stitch around the edges of it. So that's how that one got kind of changed. And then this is the larger craft envelope. Um... I played around with this, doing it a couple different ways. Um, well, the first, the first, the first thing I thought to do would be to just do the. Um, where is that one? Here it is. So, this was the first one that I that I did. I want to do like a string closure maybe on these or maybe even magnets. I think I'll probably wind up doing magnets. I love doing magnets. Um, so, but since they have this crease, see this one, I was doing it, they were too short. Like the top of the inside of the envelope was too, is too short for me to do a magnet. Like that just doesn't leave very much room right here to put the other part, you know, the, the, the other magnet. So to make that a little bit longer, um, I had to cut, basically I fold the envelope in half. Let me show you. Um, so I open the envelope up. It just makes it easier to fold, open it up and then fold that in half. Okay, and then I like to trim off this little part of the envelope. Just makes it easier to deal with. And then this side. I'm just cutting right up to the, the, the edge. And then cut those off. And then I'll fold it back this way and this is where your you know sort of like your scissor skills kind of come in handy um so then so it's folded backwards so i'm going to start cutting this right at the top of right at the top of the envelope on the inside okay and i'm just going to angle my scissors so that this flap is going to go pretty much vertical at a very very slight angle and then I'm going to curve it in. <laughs> okay. So just try to give it a nice round. And then 
I need to cut the other side to match that. So, I mean, I don't have to, but I kind of want to. Anyway, so kind of do the same thing. And this is working on the outside of the flap. Okay. So hold those together and then just, you know, so they, they basically match both sides. Okay. And then I want this to fold right down to the top of the envelope on the inside. Okay. So it's going to go like that and I'm folding it back just so I can see where the edge is. See, it just kind of helps, helps make sure you're right on the edge and then fold it in. Um, I could probably get a bone folder out now. Okay. And then since they already have this sort of natural crease, um, I don't like that. So I'm going to cover these with something and that's going to help when I go to do my magnets here too, you know? So I have a lot of um, gluing paper on the paper to do, um, if I'm going to make 18 of these. So, so what I'll do is just cover this with paper, trim it off, you know, just by using this as my guide, I will trim it off. And then, I mean, I suppose you could cover it first and then do your trimming or whatever, but I like to do things the hard way. Um, and then I'll do my magnets. So anyway, so I thought that that, you know, works out to be kind of a cool little pocket, little pocket page. And then this bag, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm, you know, I definitely, um, I still haven't even decided if I'm going to stitch these all in. I don't know. I kind of think I'm going to though. I, I kind of like doing that. So, um, I could do them like a Midori style with just an elastic. Um, but if I do that, I would actually you know, stitch this whole thing together so that it stays, you know, bound. Um, and then I just stuck a airmail envelope in the center, um, thinking, you know, I would probably use that as a pocket in the center of my, my signature. So that's kind of where I've gotten to on this. We'll see. We'll see if I wind up making any other changes. I don't think I will. I think I'm pretty happy with it like this. Um, this panel, I might do a pocket. I don't know. And then I even thought about maybe putting another one here, like maybe one of these because it definitely fits there. So I don't know. And then each one is going to get a book plate. I finished up the rest of the book plates that I had done that I was working on. So, and I could probably do a whole bunch more. Um, because I, I, co I coated a bunch of, or I painted a bunch of them and, and then, um, use some of that, uh, Gilder's wax on them. So anyway, so each one is going to have a little book plate also. And <clears throat> so I'm thinking I need to put the book plate. <laughs> I don't know. Like I want to put the book plate somewhere where it's not going to matter which way you want to close your book, you know? So if you want to close it like that, you can still see it. Or if you close it like that, you can still see it. And some of them may wind up having to go vertical, you know? Um, I, ca I mean, it's just kind of hard to decide. I did want to put it here, but then... You know, if you want to close your book like that, then that just that's just weird, you know. So it's going to have to go, I think, somewhere over in this vicinity. And that's okay. I'll figure it out. But yeah, so that's where I'm at. And um, I'm just going to try to catch the rest of these up to this point. And, and then um, I will do another video and just let you know where I'm at. So I am going to actually make a journal to go in here also. And I think what I'll do is, is just use a bunch of, um, like ledger papers and stuff like that. But I don't think I'll use any pockets in the, the actual journal because this is plenty. So, and then, like I said, I haven't decided if I'm going to put this 
in the back or in the front. I have a feeling I'm going to wind up doing this kind of like a Midori with, with eyelets and stuff. I don't know. We'll see. I kind of... I kind of like doing that and I kind of don't like doing it, but, um, and then these off cuts. So these are from the, um, when I cut, when I cut the collages down, um, I wound up with all these strips of, you know, the file folder that has some kind of cool stuff on it. So, um, so I'll wind up making these into little tags probably and using them for, for different things uh, maybe even you know some tuck spots and stuff in this I don't know but yeah so don't throw away your little scraps you know keep those you can use them for other projects and um, I don't know like if I do this if I do stringed closures somewhere these are nice to use as your um, as your your circle you know and then just punch a hole and put your eyelid in the center so, so I saved those just in case you're wondering. Anyway, so it might be a little while before I get those digitals up um, and ready in my shop, but uh, I will definitely let you know. Okay. All right, you guys. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with me and um, I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye for now.